Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by... Hi, this is Dennis with 3D Game Gear. We are gamers with a family-run business that specialize in 3D printed accessories for board games. We offer a wide range of items, including tokens, token cups, token boxes, player dashboards, and much more. We are always adding new items to enhance your gaming experience, so come check us out at the address below. Welcome to this introduction of uh, Serengeti. We're going to show you how the game plays, some of the concepts to be found in the game, and how the scoring works. We won't be covering everything, but you should have a good understanding of the game after this short intro. The supply is made of eight animals, here on left hand side. We will come back to these in a minute. Some special cards here on the right. The event deck, which will time the game. The competition track, with the Savannah running on the right hand side here. And finally, the player starting deck. Let's have a look at one of those animal stacks. As you can see, there are multiple copies of the animal, exactly the same card, and then a rock. Uh, we'll come back to that later. Each animal has two skills, one described in the top part that may have a cost, although in this case it is free. And below the animal, with a separate cost, you'll find an alternative skill. Right, let's have a look at our starting hand. It is made up of five copies of the same card, called a trail which has a cost of one sun, and it basically allows you to track animals from the supply. The back of the card features the suns themselves, and they're used to pay for card effects. So, if I want to use a trail, I'd pay a card, activate a trail, and then track an animal from the supply. For example, a bird that I would place in my discard pile. It will eventually be shuffled back into my deck, but it starts in the discard pile. Next, I can do another trail. Again, paying for it with another card, and this time I'm going to pick a lizard. And again, it goes in my discard pile. The last card in my hand, I cannot play in this instance, but I cannot take it into the next turn, so I have to flush it out. The last step is the cleanup of the play area. Everything goes in the discard, this way. And then I need to draw five new cards. And since I don't have a deck to draw from, I'm shuffling the discard to form a new deck and draw five cards from it. Ready for next turn. There are some limitations with tracking, however. There's an event deck, and each season provides its own event, which we skipped on the previous turn to show you how tracking worked. But we have a draw here, which depicts an animal and essentially prevents you tracking a specific animal during that particular season. So, if I wanted to play a trail, because of the draw, I wouldn't be able to track an antelope. Let's track a monkey instead, placing it into the discard pile. Right, let's show you something else. Let's track a giraffe. Okay, I'll take the card, put it in the discard pile. Oh, uh, but what happened here? A rock came up on the stack, and I'm going to show you how to deal with that situation. The lizard is a specialist that allows you to track animals from under rocks. So I can pay two suns and track another giraffe from under the rock. Another possibility is that I use the free skill of the lizard and do the exact same thing, but my turn would end immediately. So I wouldn't be able to use these cards, but of course I could use the trail and then the lizard. 
let's go back to the event deck and show you what the special event is in the game. The infestation is associated with a scorpion and essentially will force you to add a scorpion to your discard pile. Now, your opponent will also get a scorpion at the start of his turn, as the event applies through the entire season and affects both players equally. To deal with these threats, you may pay one sun to activate the bird, to search your deck or discard pile, and return it back to the supply. Of course, it isn't always possible to deal with scorpions right away, and if they do get into your hand, they will sting you. You will have to reveal them and then move the marker on the competition track one step away from you. Finally, the scorpion will be placed in your discard pile and you will want to deal with it before it gets back into your hand again. Scorpions are not the only special cards in the game, but unlike scorpions, carcasses are not obtained through the effect of events. Instead, you can use the lion, paying two suns, and move the marker on the competition track towards you. So the opposite of the effects of scorpions. Now, the problem is that this will give you a carcass. Carcasses go in your discard pile, like every other card, but let's see what they are in greater details. At the end of the game, carcasses may penalize you if you have more of them in your deck than your opponent. They can, however, be used to pay for activation cost of other cards. As you may expect, you can also deal with carcasses. At the cost of one sun and using the hyena, you may search your discard pile, deck or reveal one from your hand, then return it to the supply. Note that the draw doesn't affect activation, only tracking. Let's go back to the lion. For a cost of 4 suns, you may lay this lion in the savanna. At the end of the game, the player with the most lions in the savanna will win 3 points. The end of the game is triggered when 5 rocks have been revealed, or the entire event deck, 12 seasons, have been played through. Another possibility is that one player eats five on the competition track. In that case, players finish the season and then play one final season. At the end of the game, scorpions remaining in players' decks have no impact on the scoring and are simply returned to the supply. Carcasses, however, will penalize the player who has accumulated the most. And the savannah may bring one player a total of 3 points. Most points are awarded for tracking animals, however. So, for each animal, players need to compare the number of specimens they manage to track during the game. And the player who was able to most successfully track the animal scores 1 point. When all the animals have been accounted for, the player with the most points wins the game. Just a reminder that everything you see here on Gamers on Games is made possible by patrons like you. Why not check out our Patreon page? It would really help us out.